Hey everyone, Cynix here, and I've had this request a few times, so I'm going to be doing a quick run-through of some of the basics for using Corel Painter. I am using Corel Painter 9, but hopefully the newer versions aren't too different and this is still applicable. So I use Corel Painter personally for all my digital artwork from a painting, here's a digital reference stuff I was working on today or just sketching, which I was working on before I started this video. Um, so, let me just go through all of the basics for kind of getting acquainted with the, the program. Uh, first thing first, when you open it up, um, you might want to arrange your windows and stuff like that to get what you want. I like to use the color selector. Uh, the size thing's not too important. I like to use my paper. Uh, just in case I need to use it and I like to have the layers thing up and once you get stuff kind of situated how you want it I don't know you might want it differently I like to keep things on the right side uh, you can go ahead and go into window arrange palettes and just save the layout and that might be useful in case you mess things up or start Xing stuff it's a lot easier to just go through um, say you accidentally start closing stuff or things get messed up you can just go right back and if you've saved it uh, you just click it and it'll automatically bring it back to however you want it. So aside from that, um, the other main thing you want to do the first time you start using Corel Painter is you want to go into Edit, Preferences, Preferences, and go to Brush Tracking. Um, I don't think they have this in Photoshop unless they added it in the newer version, uh, but this kind of just adjusts the different pressure and velocity settings within Painter. Um, to match your typical kind of brush pressure and speed. So some of us might naturally press harder or move faster and this will kind of adjust the program to better suit you and you'll find this is useful. Uh, sometimes the brushes won't act how you think they should right away or like with the pressure and everything so that's always useful. So we have all of our basic tools over here uh, selectors, magic wand, uh, cropping, and stuff like that. Obviously there's nothing called filters like there is in Photoshop, but if you go to effects there's some basic stuff like under tonal control you get the correct colors which I like to use and you could you know switch the colors around basically under the settings of red, green, blue, and master. Um, it's just kind of get a good range of uh, color adjusting there. You could also just do a basic adjustment of colors with hue, saturation, value. Uh, and those are pretty much the only things that I use in here for the most part. So that's basically it for the menu stuff. Uh, I think most of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory um, if you're used to Photoshop. Basic icons, text, fill, and that's about it. So now I'm going to go over some of the basic hand controls, or keyboard controls rather, that you might want to use. And I generally, when, my, when I paint or draw, I just have one hand on the tablet and the other hand is resting in the corner of the keyboard right above the control, Alt and Z keys. Um, and let me show you why, obviously, oops, let me just select this color. Uh, you mess up, the, probably the most used uh, keyboard shortcut will be Control Z. Uh, just get rid of stuff you've done and in Painter uh, you can control Z multiple times or you can control Y if you want to go forward. So it's a little different than Photoshop. It's basically just uh, going backward and forward through time. Control Z, control Y. But the other nice thing is the other useful controls are also right at your hand. So one of the great ones is if you hold control and alt you can quickly change the size of your brush, which is extremely useful, extremely useful, uh, from small to big, and that's extremely useful when you're working with uh, painting and stuff like that. And the other extremely useful one, so there's three extremely useful ones, is holding Alt lets you do the color picker, so you can quickly hold Alt, select a color, and then you got that color, and I use that a lot. And those are pretty much the only things I use, so it's very useful because I can keep my hand over those same three keys. They're all right next to each other and access everything I need. 
All right, so that's about it for keyboard shortcuts. So let's head on over to the brush area, which is up in this right-hand corner. Um, and I think one of the most intimidating things about Painter is the brush uh, selector. You can see right here, it's kind of divided up into all these categories that are all based on real-world tools. And you might not have a lot of experience with uh, real traditional tools. So this can be very intimidating. You see all these options and things, and there's nothing that's quite as basic as Photoshop where you're just selecting a size and a shape of a basic Photoshop brush. Uh, they want you to select a real world tool, so that can be intimidating. Let's take for example oils. You go in there, and even then when you get into oils, you might be just a whole new can of worms is opened up as you see all these names and things which you don't understand. Um, if you don't have a deep traditional background such as fine feathering, fine camel, medium bristle sprays, and thick wet camels and you're like oh, I don't know is it gonna make little barnyard animals who knows but these are actually all the names of real brushes and the brush hair and stuff like that um, but yeah it's very intimidating but I recommend you at least go in here and start playing around with the different brushes um, but if you don't feel like trying anything too crazy the best things are usually under pens in terms of uh, the very basic stuff, like a round tip pen, might be simple. I use the scratch board tool, it's very simple, it's a flat tipped one. Uh, there's the thick and thin pen, which I use a lot for painting and stuff like that, one pixel. These are all very basic. And you can also go in um, over here and show the brush creator. And this is where you can really get nitty gritty, you can play with the brushes, uh, you can set all these different options. Uh, which is more like Photoshop, except uh, a lot of the names are more based on real-world stuff, like Impasto and Color Variability, that's not one of them, but with like Water, Liquid Ink, and blah 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 blah, Bristles, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, you can get really crazy with it. I'm not going to get into that too much right now, because I don't use a lot of custom brushes. Uh, but you can try for stuff like uh, oils or acrylics or things. You can go into that and lessen the impact of them so they're not as crazy and do minor stuff like that. Uh, but let's see. Let's just hop into photo. Yeah, sure. Let's try that. So let's see. The first brush is called Add Grain, and I'm sure this just adds, yeah, photo grain. Doesn't look that great or anything. Uh, but let's assume that I found this and I really like it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into it, click this thing on the side, and I'm going to copy the variant, and I'm going to move it to this little uh, category that I created called Cynix, and I'll just move it right there. And you do that for all the brushes you like, and before you know it, uh, basically you have them all in one place. You can do a category. Um, of your own name or whatever just to keep them organized and it's a lot easier to get at all the different brushes without having to go through these big menus and stuff so I think that's useful and where's my add grain oh here it is add grain so now I can get to it nice and easy oops and I messed up my colors by double clicking something <laughs> that's why I have this arranged palette because I'm always messing stuff up so anyway Paper is kind of interesting because a lot of the brushes have uh, impact based on the paper, such as the chalk and the, I forget what else, but uh, you'll play with them and you'll notice they pick up paper texture just naturally. Uh, you go in, uh, obviously it's not on the canvas, but you go in with something like square chalk and let me select an actual color. And it's picking up the texture based on the paper texture, which is over here. So that's why this is useful to always have up. And you can also do some tricks with it, like setting papers and uh, custom papers. And for instance, uh, since uh, Painter isn't as good with uh, doing kind of interesting textures and graphical brushes, I, I like to use the text. Or I'm sorry, I like to use the the paper settings to get some of my interesting textures. So for instance, I made this texture that's just a comic halftone, and now I could use a brush like the square chalk and just fill out a comic halftone if I wanted. 
and do fun stuff like that. I think that is about it for what I wanted to show off for now. I guess I could go over the layer stuff a little bit. You can see the layer selector. You can create a new layer. Uh, this should be familiar to Photoshop people. These are basically your layer uh, properties, multiply, screen, overlay, uh, gel is just kind of a weirder multiply, but uh, stuff like that. They're very akin to the Photoshop uh, layer properties. Obviously, you can change the opacity of the layer, preserve transparency if you're doing like masking stuff, uh, stuff like that. One of the things about uh, photo, or I'm sorry, one of the things about Painter is that when you have multiple layers, it's kind of difficult to just drop uh, two um, together instead of dropping them all to the canvas. So if you want to do that, you'll have to go make them a group. Then you'll have to go collapse the group, and then they'll be together. Um, otherwise, you can just drop stuff, and it'll drop it all to the canvas. And I think that's it, so thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more videos soon.